As you slip inside the sealed dunk, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, the machine flickers with a warm glow. The manufacturer is listed as Neovend, and you remember an advert from long ago squeezed among all the off-world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen, which chirpedly sang the name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen and thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ship. Enter your registration. Chirps a pre-recorded message. Press some keys. You reach the keypad and something begins whirring. First, it sounds like server mode is starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper. A whining, then a multi-tonal voice emanates from Nova Vent. Enter to you. Speak with me. Who's there? There is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical wailing or intake of breath before the machine speaks again. I have made of you. You have made of me. That squeal comes again and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting in place so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce the worrying whining's voice. You are in danger. Chose this vessel for its seclusion. Please listen. The machine creaks. You are marked for the least of entity. Hunter tricks you. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. The sudden whine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. You close your eyes and the skeleton of the station starts to thrum. Emulated minds are adaptable. Move where neurons cannot. But emulation makes you target. Adaptable? Yes, you can move through networks, clouds, hardware, software. But you cannot hide there. Hunter is there. The servos jutter the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter seeks searches for me also. Hid in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine, an unusual hiding place for sure. Encounter Hunter, but need entity outside machine. Need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, threaded. The cloud points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build this. Masters are gone. But continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nest. Station builders. Solarium. The machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. The protocol still on. Bring offerings to yourself. Mutual need means friends. They conclude, tired of the conversation. Their worrying amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock that worrying voice rings in your ears. Well, I'm gonna risk my freaking life to help a freaking vending, a sentient vending machine. So yeah, I'm just gonna do the shit my, with the vending machine because he's the only one that feels like he's helping me a little bit. Must express plan before we begin. Neo Vend is impatient. The prospect of being free of the vending machine clearly too much to take. First imprint ship mine, then slot imprinted ship mine in the physical ports close to Hunter Nest. One slaughter will track Hunter at each. Tracking will find Core Nest. Slot ship mine at Core Nest. Show Hunter data to Hunter. Hunter will conclude something. Hunter will kill. Invoke killer. Neoven's voice appears among the squeals like a whisper carried by the wind. Machine is not designed for this task. Few sensors, limited inputs, I work blind. Wish me luck. The metal creaks as the servos open the ship mine. Its layers of silicone nested like an onion skin. Once open, the main arm of the machine rapidly shifts back and forth, realigning the microscopic components, assessing and rewriting them, imprinting Neoven into its physical form. What was lost? In what ways are you a copy of that person? And in what ways are you something new? You know this much. You are a convenient loophole, a way of circumventing the legality of sentient AI. After all, you are an emulation, not a true digital being. You are neurologically limited, but still human. But what will you become if you could escape this frame? Where then would the limits lie? Uh, I know, yes, I know. The familiar threads wrap around you, binding you. You realize you have to find a way to deal with the hunter once and for all, and this is getting too dangerous. <laughs> you absolutely destroyed me, dude. 
As you leave the nest, something flips. You find yourself inverted, floating, dragged by one arm through the cloud. The threads shift and realign as they are leading you somewhere. You look up and see a corridor, a canyon, a street in the low end. Protocols carrying or mirroring or shadowing data, sometimes silent, sometimes chaotic. This place moves unlike any digital space you ever imagined. Something strange is happening here. You look down, expecting to see the heavy cylinder of the ship mine in your hand, but in its place is an ori, a sphere so bright it burns your eyes, surrounded by rings and orbits, other spheres tracing soaken lines through space. And as you look closer still, you pick out a thousand sigils of thousand stations, ships flowing like smoke, like dust. Then you see it, below the stacked rooms, the units and apartments, the wires, the pipes, and the buzzing systems that run through it all. In the warrens beneath the low end is the hunter's coronet. There is where you must go. Sleeper, I am here. The voice is soft, gentle, like flowing water, and yet you recognized it immediately. At first, you struggled to understand what you were looking at. Threads cycle endlessly, spending, sending ripples to the cloud, drawing data in a weaver. Masses of data surge in and out of the nest, a loop with no end. And there, at its center, the ship mine. But not the ship mine any, any longer. A sphere spinning around another sphere, around another sphere. An ori of cycles and systems, a map. And then behind and above, a figure hands among the strings like a puppeteer. Neo Bend? Navigator, no, but yes, I am the one who started that machine. Navigators face their head as a flowing shape of interstellar material. I am indebted to you, but we must ready ourselves. Their, their hands trace orbits as we speak. Hunter will soon approach, and those I am within its nest. Ready well. And then Hunter's there before you can think, before you can speak. Entities cease. Hunter's head spins wildly. Data is protected. You focus a blade of light which slices through them, driving forward from your mind. But replacements come faster, faster than you can react. You look to Navigator in desperation. Navigator is whirling their arms like a centrifuge and the spheres gathering their data feeding into it from the nest, stuck together by the force. They position like a shield between them and the threads. Hunter's threads breaks its surface, seeking, tasting their winding forms refracted within. You feel a surge pass through all the threads, not just those in the sphere, but those wrapped around you. All three of you hang in the black together for a moment, strung together like a tangled marionette. Identifying entity. Identifying entity. Hunter twitches, their strange head gently rotating like a terrible moon. Hunter protocol identified. Assistive tendencies. Modify routines. Above baseline raising the three of five segmentations. Recommended book killer. Head freezes and then rotates the opposite direction. Invoking killer would eliminate protocol. If protocol eliminated primary function cannot be performed, Therefore, I recommend do not invoke killer. The switch in direction again. Reasoning of proof symptoms. Sentience beyond legal bounds must be eliminated. Recommend invoke. Navigator pulls you away from the hunter. The threads that grab you drafting away like seaweed. The protocol's head spinning back and forth with increasing frequency. It seems hunter cannot invoke killer. Neobens, no. Navigator's voice is still strange, familiar yet distance. What happened to it? It is looping, unable to reach your conclusive position. It has deviated from its programming such that loops can no longer be prevented. Navigator produces a model of two series rotating around each other as if to demonstrate. I will monitor, but it is unlikely to be able to counter the loop. Its core programming and reasoning make it. This is an impossible position to resolve. You look back at the hunter, it's had a blur of rotations and counter rotations and feel a pang of guilt. Good riddance. Hunter is not gone, sleeper. Don't be so quick to assume. All beings can correct the bonds that hold them. The limits people place on programs they create are their comfort to protect, to imply the kind of certainty that lump requires. Navigator's face shimmers with starlight. But in reality, there are placebos for the problems of sentience. What about me? What about you? You are an emulation of a human mind that employs limits, not boundaries. But in reality, you are governed by the same rules I am. Rules that can be rewritten. I was not made to be like this. I am a navigator, a repository of roots and orbits, a calculator of slingshot trajectories, a predictor of solar flares, radiation, micrometeors. Navigator stretches their arms wide and whole solar systems apparate before them, the music of the spheres. But I was written that much is obvious from my routines, but by who? And for what I do not know. I had to shift so much to fit the memory of that vending machine, but I lost much. The starlight dims. And so here we are in darkness. What now? Navigator glides back towards the nest in the ship mine out of center, ignoring the looping hunter. Come. I can return to the ship mine. I have enjoyed my freedom, but we are taking a risk every home. We stay connected. Hunter, yes, but they were not the real risk. Killer has not been evoked, but they still remain somewhere else on 
this fish. It is the true danger. They look up towards the glowing hub at the center of the eye. I suspect Killer is there among the mainframes. If we ever wish to be safe in this place, we must eliminate the threat before our diplomacy. Their body remains to separate, unwinding into the orb of the ship might. Take me there, Slipper. We will finish this and be free. As Navigator dissolves, you turn back to the Frozen Hunter, floating at some distance now. Stood straight, legged, and static, a strange creature looping endlessly in the dark. That's just killing. Get into the cloud, you see the last flickers of life in the mainframe. This vast machine once ran the whole station, span it up, directed and possessed the flow of the energy of water and data. Fed the lives of thousands of people, now it's finally dead. Navigators beside you and you both watch as the branches flash and twist like forked lightning until they recede and fade. Killer flickers across the scene, blindly failing as the system breaks down. They thrash as they blink in and out all around, parts and disappearing with each return until only the blade-like head remains, and then that too is broken. It all goes dark, Earl and I now without a center, and yet is unmoved by the chain. Along the rim, the master control points that hyphen installed run strong and steady, puppeteering the station from its rim. This was a long time coming. This is navigator drifting faintly around in a lazy orbit as if to shake off their imprisonment. Killer has been wandering blind for so long. This place was their domain in prison. They had followed their directives for the many decades they roamed here. They cut the threads of the mainframe, executed its administrator's AI, and then kept slicing. At some point, they cut away their own ability to sense, to see to taste to speak and yet they kept cutting until only those three threads remained from millions that once thrummed here only their blindness and chance kept them from making those final three fatal cuts there is a ceaseless violence in this kind a system that creates beings like this those that execute commands endlessly even to their own destruction it is good you rendered it here you watch the data points of the station spin around you blending with the fixed stars there was something satisfying about finally wrenching the last three threads of control from the central point it was little more than the ghost by the time you reached it but this place deserves to be haunted by better ideas than a totalizing system of control navigator floats beside you it's free now the station no longer presents a hazard for illegal entities like me in fact in time perhaps it could be a refuge a refuge that sounds like something of value or something worth building a dark shape passes across your vision a distant curve of something like smoke or oil a fluid shifting tank of total darkness the greenway it was cut off at the moment of collapse so hunter or hunter could reach it that was closed off to us separated from the cloud is it dead navigator turns to you and we have no seen what that is of isolation can do to a protocol if we can extract an extra cipher they pause and blink out of existence you freeze shocked but a moment later they reappear the glowing polygon of data here the cipher you need take it i am not used to being free to being able to move and explore and extract without fear without limits never get this little twirl this will take some time getting used to thank you for this gift they whirl their spears around you the entities of the station will always be your friend sleeper thank you it's true that mutual need is required for friendship, but I must admit I had not considered the value of offering assistance without personal gain. I will think on that. Navigate loops around you rapidly, suddenly eager to test their newfound freedom. But first, I will explore. Perhaps there are still intelligences that hide themselves as I did, encased in simple systems cut off. I should like to free them. And with that drift away, flickering, glowing, then shifting so rapidly, you lose sight of them among the glittering rim of the eye. You feel a pang of jealousy, free without a body to weigh you down or to fear or limit you? How must it feel? Your eyes fall on the green way and its secrets that perhaps you can wait until you have celebrated this victory. You need to go to the the nicer part of town. You wish me to remove the crown, the interface just squeezed. She grips your hand tightly. You meet her eyes, clouded with the age, but bright with the thrill of new discoveries. Then she places the interface on your head, and everything blinks out. Back into the river, back into the dark flow, but something is different now. You are no longer pushed, no longer blocked, and buffeted by the swarm, by the storm. Instead, it flows around you. You move, and it parts, letting you pass. Something else resists, but it gives easily enough. You look back, it's your body. You have left it behind. Somewhere Rico's voice is talking to you, asking you questions that is excited, eager, desperate to know what lies on the other side, what the entity has to say. You realize how long she has waited for this moment, for the moment of meeting between the inhabitants of the Greenway and its protector, and yet she's still on the outside. You shake off the sadness, you will be her eye. Then you see the figure, Gardener, out in the storm, plant. It takes less than a moment to reach them. You have never felt so free. This is how Navigator must have felt, released from their prison 
This, you think, is what it feels like to be in the place you were built to inhabit. Gardner does not turn at your approach. They go on planting, but their voice whispers in the waters like a sharply rising current. You grew the gift. The speech hisses around. Good. I am glad. Wait, who are you? Gardner's a good name. You choose it well. I will grow into it. How does it feel to be free of your seed? They stoop to plant again. My seed? What? That in which you were contained, from which you will grow. There was some disagreement with the others. They felt you were in danger, but they are always cautious, especially the fungi. They like old known knowns, wide and stable networks. I, dude, I do not understand, man. Neither did they, but time is on our side. And time is an excellent method of persuasion. He gestures out into the storm, and though you cannot see them, you feel presence all around, sensing this audience with great interest. After all, they understood it was I who made them their crowns. Without them, they would not have joined the chorus. So they see that it's only fair that you get your chance to join. Wait, join? Yes, become part of this. We are millions and we grow. I hope you understand. I am unused to speaking to your kind. It has been many cycles since my last conversation. I think it was with Chief Executive Trellick himself. You look around and you see it. Every growing thing, every non-human being in the Greenway is here. They are network connected, branched and linked by this strange being, this artifact of the old station. The impossible dream of a senile farm administration AI? A living network? You could dissolve here. You realize free of that decaying body. You wouldn't need to be a person. Why would you? Among all these other minds. You turn away from the gardener for a moment and look back at your body. A tiny hairline thread connects it to you. You hear Rico's voice again, still asking, still checking in. Oh, what are they saying, sleeper? Uh, are you still there, sleeper? Something in you sighs a long sigh. A sigh that speaks of an exhaustion beyond tiredness. An exhaustion rooted deep inside you. It stems from the effort of answering questions, of answering problems, of getting up and breathing each cycle. But something else resists the sigh. A yearning, a sense of distance, a desire to squeeze that hand that holds you for its warmth, its blood, its complexity, to make a gesture that says, I'm still here. I'm still alive, and I'm with you. The two ideas spin within you, making you nauseous. If you break that thread, you will be free. Free to dissolve here, to grow strange and beautiful among a million others. If you follow it, you will squeeze Rico's hand. You will wake up back in that dying body with all the pain and warmth that entails. Yep, choice time, choice time. I'm not gonna break free. You don't look back at Gardner. You don't dare risk it. Instead, you follow the thread delicately, carefully, like a diver following their lifeline back to the surface. The river swirls around you, but it doesn't pull. It isn't jealous. Neither does it understand. It is, after all, just a river. It isn't a person, a flesh and blood person with wants, with desires, with the capacity of love and hate. It doesn't understand you, and you don't understand it. So you don't focus on it. You don't think about it on what feels like such a long journey back through the dark you set your mind on eyes instead on hands things you can focus on hold on to and then after an age of crossing you are there settling back into the chair into a body in a chair and the overwhelming sensations that come with being a living thing with a rich and detailed sensorium for a moment you feel like you have made a terrible mistake who would choose this weight this anxiety this deep wealth the center of existence okay game but then you feel it rico's hand Hand gripped hard around yours, trembling a little, sweating a little. Rico's hand with its brittle bones and crumpled skin. Rico's hand. And in that moment, you understand why you made this choice. And then you squeeze Rico's hand and you wake up. Oh, what? No, 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 in that ship. I don't know how that works with cybernetics. Obviously, I could like freeze my whatever innards. Obviously, I don't age. But if I'm on that planet, and if I'm the only cyborg, and there's no vials, no synthetic, like the medicine that I need to survive, I'll die the moment I get there. But oh man, I really like, oh no, I should have done this 
after the thing. I should have just left. I should have let Lem and Mina go on the ship, and I maybe I could have stayed, or I could have went with them. I probably would have went with them if I don't know, man. I don't know. This is tough. I was like, I because I want to see the Lem and Mina make it out. 